most common failure on an evaporator is just going to be a leak. How you find that normally is there's either dye in the system already or you can add dye to the system and just use a UV light and wherever that leak is forming, that light will blow. A few other reasons for leaks. The whole evaporator is aluminum. It's very fragile. The tubes are fragile. They can bend easily. Anytime you're working on the outside, up under the hood, you just want to make sure you're not bending these tubes because they will break at the welds and the seams. Moisture and contaminants sitting on, on the evaporator for a long period of time can actually cause some electrolysis and cause pitting, which can lead to leaks as well. Now you'll replace more evaporators in areas with humid weather. Um, the moisture is going to collect here. It is going to collect dust, debris. Anything that's pulling through this evaporator is going to be stuck to it. So you just want to make sure that that's clean and clear whenever you do your AC. Now when your air conditioner is running or you stop and you turn your car off, you may realize a puddle of water um, is dripping out from under the car. Most of the time what that is is just condensation, um, moisture in the air that is collected on the outside of, of the evaporator and is just draining out of the drain tube. So when you have hot, humid air coming through the fins of the evaporator, what will happen is the heat will be absorbed, the moisture will condense and fall out from under the car and so you'll have clean cool air coming out of the evaporator. If you have a situation where you don't have enough refrigerant in the vehicle what can happen is your refrigerant can actually evaporate too soon. So instead of here the refrigerant's going to evaporate down here and what happens is any moisture that's in the air that's pulling through the evaporator is going to freeze here and you get a you get an icing situation and now you can't pull any of that air through. So you're only getting maybe half of the airflow that you should through the evaporator. Now your older type evaporators, your serpentine type evaporators, what you can see is the refrigerant travels here, snakes through the system and comes out. Now the newer type, most are like this. If you've seen this before, this is what the inside of all condensers look like now. Um, it's the parallel flow type. So what happens is refrigerant has to pass through each one of these small tubes individually. Um, if you get any debris in this one, you can't flush it. Uh, the old style, you could put flush in, you could blow it through, you could get it mostly clean. This type, you're just not gonna get anything out of it. If you get any contaminants, metal particles, anything like that, you're just gonna have to replace it. Now, what you wanna notice here, this is a nice, clean, new evaporator. All the air that's coming through here, it's gonna go across, it's gonna run smooth, clean. Now, what you wanna be careful with is, if you live in high dust climates, transporting animals, um, anything that's just causing a lot of dirt and debris to constantly be in the cab of the vehicle, what's happening is any kind of moisture that comes through here is gonna stick to it. And you can see this one, you can't blow anything through that. That's a solid block, so even if you're air conditioning is working 100% properly, you're not getting any air in the cabin through this. A lot of times as well, when you have something like this, you'll notice a musty or moldy smell. That's because all the debris in here is holding the moisture. It's not letting it dry out. So it's gonna hold those, um, the mold and the mildew smell. And the only way to fix that is to change your evaporator. One thing you can do to prevent this is to keep the floorboard area clean. When you're on max AC, what's happening is you're actually pulling air from inside of the cabin, you recirculate. So anything on the floors, anything that's kicked up uh, by the seats, any of that, is actually just pulling straight back through into your evaporator. And some vehicles on the market have rear air. When you do, you have a rear evaporator. So you'll have one of these up front, you'll have one in the rear um, for the rear passenger compartment. The vehicle have its own controls, its own blower speeds. So just be mindful of more tech tips like these, visit gpdtechtips.com.